Do you know one of the best tweets I've seen, John? I think um, someone might have retweeted it. I think you put it up. It was the milestones for Liverpool scorers. Number one, Jock Smith. Uh, works to oh, the yeah. Of Daddy Chambers, Jack Barman, my uncle, Jimmy Melia, 4,000 goal. Yeah, yeah, he, yeah. He yeah St. John, him. Terry Mack, and then yours at 7,000. That, yeah, that's some yeah, statistics, yeah. that. That's great. I only got, I, I only get, to, I, I, I love anything that puts my name in, in, in light in Liverpool Football Club. You know, it, you know, that, that's, that's there. Yeah, it's, uh, yeah, brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. People, it'll always be there for people to see, you know, and, uh, yeah, there, there's a few things I've done for Liverpool. And I like goals per game ratio, whenever most sellers are shown, I'm just underneath with Roger Hunt and I think Jack Palmer might be in there, you know, the, yeah. and it's, it's great to see that. I, I'm so proud, you know, because it's my team and I like people to know actually what I've done for them, you know, in such a short period of time. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. What was the best game you reckon you played in, John, at Liverpool? Well, there were so, so many meaningful games. The, 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 the best performance was probably beating Forest 5-0 that night. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. They, yeah. They, they, were, they were second in the yeah. league. They were second in the league, to put it, you know, bluntly. And and it could have been 10-0. We absolutely, you know, and the first five ten minutes we weren't at it, and then all of a sudden we just clicked, hmm. and we just yeah, we just we just you know tore them apart. Hmm. That, that was brilliant to watch, it really was. That was it. Yeah, it was. Just the joy, yeah, yeah. yeah it sticks in your memory. That. Yeah. Jeff, can I yeah, yeah. can I ask you about the the, the publishers pitch pub, publisher? We've spoken to uh, Peter Kenny Jones, but you know his Billy Little book, Billy Little at one hundred. Also published with Pitch Publishers. Yeah. How did you get with them? We've spoken to so many writers who've got so frustrated because they can't get a traditional publisher or an agent, so they go down the indie route. How, how did you make contact with them? Do you think you were lucky? Do you think it was because of the quality of your work? Obviously, it's, it has a quality. Um. Well, you know, I like to think the I like to think the quality is there. Yeah. Um. But I do think there's an element of luck. I think there's always an element of luck. Right place, right time. Yeah. Uh, I'd submitted articles in the past to various publications that have been rejected. Um, but I think I had a, I think I had the right idea at the right time. So we know Liverpool books sell. Mm. So they're appealing to publishers because they sell. They've got such a massive worldwide fan base. Um, it was the 125th anniversary um, of the history of the club. And I had a book with 125 stories about Liverpool Football Club. Right. So why some why an Italian would be interested yeah. in it is because, you know, it's a positive image of Italians. And, yeah. you know, the, 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 the film, you know, the, the film business has, has really, you know, in, today in our society, you know, you know, we have we use this expression woke and we use, you know, it's all anti-racism and, you know, all that kind of stuff, which, you know, is is great and it's appropriate, you know, except that they've forgotten about Italians. Um, there's only been one film made in this country, um, a popular film. There might be some indies out there, but, you know, I know there are some indies, but popular movies that Hollywood backed films. There's only been one that hasn't shown Italians as either criminals or kind of uneducated, you know, buffoonish kind of people. Um, you know, so uh, this Italian... What is that? What is that, Mike? What film? Um, Unbroken. Oh, okay. Um, is the true story of, of a World War II pilot. Ah, oh, yeah, I've seen it. Yeah. And uh, yeah. so it just shows Italians as just mm. being Italian. It, mm. You know, there's no mafia. There's no... You know, it just it just happens to be an Italian guy. And that's, you know, so this Italian director was especially interested in madness because it showed Italians in a, in a positive light. In fact. Pisa, delighted that you've uh, agreed to join me, Steve. Oh, no worries. Thanks very much for uh, wanting to speak to me. Okay. <laughs> yeah, do, so good, to s- nice. Thank you. <laughs> good to speak to you, Peter. Yeah, yeah, great. Yeah, you both all right. Book- yeah, both well, fine, mate. Yeah. Well, obviously, we're going to focus on your book, a little at one hundred. But before that, can you just tell us a bit more about yourself? How you got into writing? What's your background? I know you're not not that old anyway, but you know, <laughs> do, do you have a background apart from <laughs> apart from writing? Well, uh, basically, uni. It was it was never something I thought I'd do. I. Um, I just did history in uni. I actually went to do primary teaching with history and 
Liverpool Hope was the only place you could do history and teaching. And I, I was pretty sure I wanted to be a teacher, but it never uh, never materialised. So I ended oh, up yeah. just doing history on its own. So um, at the end of the three years, obviously you get to do your dissertation and I just wasn't sure what I was allowed to do. And I just like kind of said off the cuff, am I allowed to do something about footy? And he said, yeah. So uh, I, I just cool. didn't realise that I'd be recognised as, as an academic or whatever. So I, I did that. I did it on Liverpool and Everton in the interwar period and just why people were spending the money on football when they had no money, basically. Um, thought you was all right. So I stayed on for the Masters and um, did similar for the dissertation and that. I did um, Shankly and Catholic, basically like late 50s through to the 60s early 70s and just kind of just said like comparing both of them again and just saying like why Shankly is so well known and you know, so well, I'd never heard of Harry Catholic and they, they both had a pretty similar <laughs> a similar record obviously I'm from the red side which might, yeah. might be why but I just was interested how like they can have such different legacies with being on paper pretty much similar like success rate really so I just did that and then once I finished that, I realised basically that I had a bit of work that my dad and all his mates and people his age would might be interested in. So I just kind of chopped it up and sent it to Liverpool and Everton websites. And they just said they liked it and said, will you do some more? So I just carried on going. And I thought, I don't just want to be like Mr. Merseyside or Mr. Liverpool. So I tried to broaden it a bit. And I thought, I'll see what other websites can I get on. Then I just tried to target what programmes I can try and get in. And then just it just kept growing, really. And then... As, as I kept, kept writing, it was Dave Cottrell, who was the uh, the editor of the Liverpool programme. He just said to me, why don't you try and do a book? So I thought, OK, why not? So me and my dad came up with like three, four ideas and one of them was about Billy Little. So that's what took off and that's it. Well, I think why you're talking to me now. OK, with you, can we talk about your, your boxing career and then move on to your later career as an actor and as a writer? Absolutely. More creative type of things. Yes. Oh, good, good. The first question, uh, we... We've had a couple of chats on Twitter, and you give me some brilliant replies, really insightful, analytical, I don't know, insights into the minds of a boxer, the psych of a boxer. What, what is it that motivates a youngster to get up out of bed in the early hours of the morning, train like a Spartan, and to get into a sport, to climb into a ring where they face injury, possibly death? What, what is it? What's in their mind? Is the hidden demons that's driving them there? Hidden demons and the fact that, like, you know, uh, most boxers... Uh... Most successful boxers, yeah. so uh, they come from a place of deprivation, right? Yeah. Uh, and most boxers, like you know, no matter what color you are, coach you are, whatever you are, like you know, um, you come from a place where there's emotional deprivation, more than likely physical abuse, yeah. uh, mm -hmm. emotional uh, manipulation. And uh, at some point, you know, the, uh, the child, uh, the boxer realizes that. He doesn't realize, though, I don't think the boxer, as I told you in my, uh, one of my emails to you, yep. I don't yeah. think the boxer can have a firm understanding of why he fights, though. Because if, yeah. if you went to a psychologist, yeah. if Muhammad yeah. Ali goes to a psychologist in 1960 after he won the Rome Olympics, yeah, go back. Says, you know, right. And like, you know, and the psychologist and the psychologist like asks, like, you know, why do you want a box? Yeah. And Muhammad, like, you know, tells him his 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 story, his story. Um, you know, not the uh not in the you know Muhammad will begin to tell the psychologist his uh, his PG story. His PG is like, yeah. you know, like you know the rental uh, guidance is right, 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 right. It's juvenile. Right, that's right, yeah, you know. You know, because like, you know, um, like many fighters, Muhammad, like, you know, it's, it's like, you know, it's really, it's very rarely spoken about, but like, Muhammad had conflict with his father. Yeah. You know, and a lot of boxers have conflicts with dad. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if a lot of female boxers have conflict with mom, but like, you know, that's, yeah. that's the case, man.